Good evening. This is Rob Bell, and you are watching Getting the Record Straight. Excuse me. This is the Black Rock and Soul uh, edition. Basically, when we you know go into the arts and deal with uh, people who are doing things creatively, particularly in the city, in the city of Philadelphia, where we're located. Uh, when you watch this, please take time to like it, share it, and subscribe. Um, you know, we're doing pretty good in that area, but, you know, I always need more folks to subscribe to what we're doing here on getting the record straight. And most importantly, stay safe. Things are still a little, you know, touchy out there and um, uh, people are still, you know, falling by the wayside. I have a couple of friends who are in the hospital as we speak. So stay safe, you know, keep your mask on and uh, keep apprised of what's going on. Um, as you know, when I do this show, I typically deal with folks from Philadelphia and I tip, oftentimes talk about the treasures that this city has and, um, you know, treasures that are not spoken about enough and not given the kind of exposure I think they deserve. And true to form, I have another treasure with me. Um, actually, she represents a family of treasures and a, fa a legendary family, if you will, um, uh, often referred to as Philly's first family of art. And with me is Ellen Tiberino. And uh, Ellen is an artist herself, as well as her brothers, I think it is, um, uh, several brothers. And um, at 3819 Hamilton Street is their uh, home and uh, effectively a museum there that is, uh, again, a place that uh, people have talked about so often. In fact, I had uh, Mercer Red Cross on here uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he was referencing the, the Tiberino family and just how much they contributed to the city. So without further ado, uh, welcome, Ellen. Uh, it's finally good to meet you and see you. I see you on Facebook enough, but um, <laughs> uh, Facebook should be paying me. <laughs> about that, but uh, thank you for being here. It's, uh, it's great to meet you. Wonderful to meet you too. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Um, I spoke about, uh, you know, the family and uh, that, uh, you know, it says on your website that for more than 50 years, uh, you know, you've been doing art and creating art uh, in the Palton Village area, which for those of you who don't know is around the Drexel University area. Um, actually, my mother is from that area, uh, which at one time we used to refer to as the bottom. Yeah, uh, yeah, the black bottom. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, but yeah, you know, give us a little bit from your uh, point of view, certainly better than I could, uh, some of the history of um, your family, the Tiberino family, and the museum there. Uh, my mother and father were both well-known, established Philadelphia artists. Mm -hmm. My mother was the first African-American woman to win the Crescent from the Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, my father was a well-known muralist, did murals all around the city, had a popular nightclub that uh, on 13th and South throughout the 80s and 90s, mm. and his murals decorated that building. Um, we have a compound of houses in oh, Palo Alto, West good. Philly. Mm. And after my mother's death in the early 90s, my father decided to make it into a memorial museum to him. So he uh, went about incorporating it into a museum the different buildings you can go through, see her work on the walls. Outside, we have various artists' friends' work, my father's murals. Uh, Marindell officiated as a museum in uh, 98. It's a wonderful, unique, beautiful spot. Um, and it is one of the hidden gems of Philly. <laughs> I was there years ago, there was a party and I know you've had many. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, um, 
I finally got back because I, I had heard about it quite a bit and I got through the, I just can't remember the, you know, specifics of when I was there and what the occasion was, but I remember it was a really fascinating, fascinating place. Um, and so it's you and how many brothers and what do you, each of you specialize in? in terms? Of I have three brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm stained glass mosaic and ceramic. Mm -hmm. Uh, my brother, Raphael, is a painter, illustrator. Mm -hmm. My brother, Gabriel, is a painter. He does a lot of murals for mural arts. Mm -hmm. My brother, Leonardo, when we were kids, he's now Latif. He converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, he'll always be Leo to me. Uh, <laughs> he was probably the best one when we were kids. But uh, he made a decision, you know, when he was 12, I think he, you know, made a big deal, to, went out to lunch with my dad and said, listen, dad, I have to tell you something. I don't want to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's the only one. And, you know, and, and he's still involved. You know, he does, he deals in the end of art sales, you know, so, you know, so he's still involved. But uh, the rest of us are all artists. Mm -hmm. And you took, you're named after your mom, right? Yeah. <laughs> the story with that is uh, I'm named after my father's favorite artist. And my brothers are my two older brothers are named after my mother's favorite artist, Raphael and Leonardo. Okay, all right. And because I'm named after my mother. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, you told me that you have a couple of events, or there's an event coming. Well, up I don't. I don't to... live in the museum anymore. I kind of uh -huh. after my father's passing, figured it was time for me to break out on my own. I live in the artist houses at Forty Fifty Fountain. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's. As wonderful as it is to grow up surrounded by all this art and all this beauty, mm -hmm. it's hard kind of to center on yourself and your art and your vision, you know, because they both are such strong voices, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm doing that. I've been focusing the last few years on working on my art. And, uh, for the past, last year, I've been the director, at, assistant director at Community Education Center sure, at sure. 3500 Lancaster Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's well known artist workshop <laughs> you could call it we have the jazz on the ave we have the african dance class african drumming class you know and uh with covid it's it's been a scary time for all nonprofits, all arts organizations because it's hard to get that funding mm -hmm. um so we've been trying to come out with creative ideas and think outside of the box so what i have coming up is a uh, holiday fundraiser it's going to open December 13th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on a better world, no, betterworld.org, mm -hmm. betterworld.org. And it's a fundraiser for the CEC. And we'll be selling limited edition prints of my family's work. Danny Simmons, who's a good friend of, my, of mine and of my family's, was generous enough to donate a print of his work. Um, different crafts you know, little kitschy items, you know, people could get for Christmas gifts. Mm -hmm. It's just like an eclectic mix of everything. Uh, this well-known sister who's well-known for her vegan meals, donated like a week's worth of vegan meals. Somebody else donated smoothies. So it's a nice little mix of stuff, affordable, mm -hmm. you know, things start at $25. Uh, so if you this did, again? I hope people check it out. It's going to be open from December 13th to December 20th. You can find the link on our on CEC's Facebook or CEC's Instagram. And the official site where everything's listed, the auction site is betterworld.org, betterworld.org. Mm -hmm. So I'd appreciate it if people could come out and support. Um, like I said, it's hard times for these small mom and pop art organizations and we wanna be around when this all clears out. But I mean, you know, this is unprecedented. And unfortunately, you know, everybody goes after the artist first, you know, when uh, after COVID hit the city, the first cut our mayor went to make was to the arts, got rid of the city hall art. I mean, I couldn't believe it. In a time like this, you need art more than anything. You need that therapy. You need that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the good thing to come out of the tragedy of these young black men dying in the protest is they gave money back to the arts. So that was the silver lining in that cloud. I mean, it's sad that that had to happen, you know, but that's the bone they threw us. So I'm thankful because they were gonna do a slash and burn and just cut out the arts 
altogether, mm-hmm. you know, which is, is, is just so wrong. You know, uh, mural arts, uh, these different organizations, they're what make our city unique. You know, it's what marked it on the map, you know, so to just not take that into regard, you know, and just be so quick to cut, cut out all the arts funding is a disgrace. It's, um, you know, and, and there's, a, you know, we talk about the history of the city, certainly the modern history. And that's one of the things that has contributed a great deal to the renaissance of the city. The renaissance in one sense, but also the descent in, you know, your areas, you know, your schools where art has been taken out yep. uh, over the years. You know, I go back to the 70s, um, uh, you know, where, you know, the, the artists, the musicians, um, <laughs> you know, drummers, you name it, yeah. uh, that came through our school systems and our neighborhoods, you know, was just, uh, you know, a vibrant, fertile uh, kind of thing. Not that we didn't have problems, but there was always that outlet there. Yeah. And um, uh, the fact that they took all that stuff away has just been, you know, a real detriment, I think, to the, to the various communities, especially the poorer communities. Yeah. So, it's like, you know, they give you something in one hand, you know. Yeah. They gave us charter schools, you know, but nobody really realized, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons with that. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I'm somebody who went to school to be a teacher, you know, so it's not, they're not union teachers, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it's not, you know, not as much arts and things like that, mm-hmm. you know. Some are when they start, you know, that's the other thing too, you know, they're good when they start, they're good for the first five years, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just, it's sad, it's sad the state of things, you know. Mm-hmm. It's the bureaucracy, you know, and then you have the tenure tax abatement, you have all this developing, but no money coming in the coffers to fund the inner city schools. Right. And uh, yeah, and the neighborhoods. Um, You know, when I think about, you know, where the, uh, you know, the the, uh, houses are and the museum and all, you know, it's really central to, uh, you know, again, historically to so much that has gone on in the city. You, You mentioned development, uh my god 30 years you know when i like i said i go back to the 70s you know drexel was nowhere yeah. no you know had looked nothing like it, it looks now yeah of course what around the corner not far from you is where the first move house was and yeah. the situation there and the third, uh, third. yeah um so like five blocks um can you talk about or just kind of share some feelings about being there while all of these things develop, you know? Well, it's funny you would bring up the move because uh, it's finally getting its, that's finally been getting the light shed on it. Mm -hmm. When the second move confrontation happened uh, over on Osage, my parents were the only artists to speak out about it. Mm -hmm. They did a piece on it Mm -hmm. titled The Move Bombing. They collaborated on it. And it hung at uh, Temple's Law School. And at the time, uh, Mayor Good's daughter was going there mm-hmm. and she tried to get it taken down. And the, the piece depicts them being murdered, you know, on flames in the fire, because mm-hmm. you know? that's what happened, you know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I remember Chuck Stone wrote a big piece in the Inquirer in defense of my parents, mm-hmm. you know, but they caught a lot of flack for that, you know. And it's funny, you know, I guess they were ahead of their time, you know, now to see people, you know, officially apologizing, like, Mm -hmm. was this graceful to ever happen to drop a bomb on, you know? The middle of a city, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's funny these, how people can remake their image, you know, and, oh, it wasn't him, it was, you know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, come on now, you know? It, it, It was disgraceful, disgraceful, and all those people to be burned out of their homes. And, you know, the fact that, my father worked for DHS at the time. Oh. He was telling me, uh, yeah, because although he owned the successful nightclub on South Street, mm-hmm. he had to take care of my mom's medical bills, so he always had to have that day job, but that's mm-hmm. somewhere else, neither here nor there. <laughs> um, but he remembered talking to people that, you know, they were under surveillance with the kids. The kids were taken out every day to the park. So if they wanted to arrest the move members, they could arrest them. No, they let them back through the barricade, go back up in the building. You know, so 
you know, oh, and when the kids try to run out, I believe it was just Birdie Africa. He goes by a different name now. He survived. Mm -hmm. They shot him when the people tried to escape the burning building. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's disgraceful. Disgraceful. You know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's almost poetic uh, justice that now you have uh, a film, I think, that's coming out, a documentary. It came out last night. My brother yeah. watched it last night. I haven't TV. seen it yet, but that'll be, like, on my thing to do this weekend. But that, you know, and this whole piece on defund the police. And, uh, you know, what I was watching today was, um, and of course, the, <laughs> there's just so many ironies going on as I'm just talking. It really about is. It, 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 you know what? It's like, as dark as the time as it is, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff's coming to light. You know, it's like what yeah. they say, what you do in the dark is going to come to light. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, I watched something today where, the governor of Florida sent these police to this woman's yes. house. Did yes, you see she that? Yes, she was uh, the coronavirus. She's a scientist. Yeah, she's and a scientist. They wanted her to fudge the data. Yeah. And she, she, she was a whistleblower. And, uh, yeah. Speaking truth to power, bringing darkness to light. And uh, I'm telling you, man, people need to wake up. You know, they talk about they people really being do. woke. They really do. It, it, I mean, it, people people are, are fake woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's a lot going on, man. People better wise up. It's a lot going on. Uh, I'm glad to live in the time I am because, I don't know, things aren't looking too good for the next generation, you know, if we don't get it together. These, uh, it's very dark times, very dark times. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm there's things to look forward to, you know, there's a changing of the administrations and things, but we have to hold them accountable. You know, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Boy, you know, yeah. We need some bailouts, you know, we need these student loans forgiven. We need help for the everyday Joe. I mean, that first stimulus package, the fact that the airlines and these people were being bailed out, just to, as soon as the money were gone, lay people off. And that's the way it's always been done. There is no trickle down, you know, and, uh, America is the richest country, and we do nothing. We need health care. We need things. You know, it's disgraceful. We bail, out the we bail out the corporate heads, you know. But you know what passed with bipartisan support? The military budget. That uh, always. Flew. Always. Always. And it's the largest now. I mean, $700 billion, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's disgraceful. It's, yeah. And it's like they have to create things to, you know, I remember... Huh, remember a time back in the 80s when, you know, you would watch movies and they had to create fake villains because, you know, it was after the, it was after the Red Scare, after uh, the Cold War had ended, you know, and it was so boring. I remember watching uh, Private Benjamin or some <laughs> little cheesy 80s movie and there was no enemy, you know, they had to make, make up a pretend enemy. You know, what, what nice times those were. And now, know? now we've reversed and Russia's the enemy again in China and you know, we're going to have to, you know, I just heard that they want to build a whole fleet for the Pacific to confront China. But let's get back to art for so. Yeah, what sorry. You, I didn't mean to go. No, it's but, good stuff because that's what fuels it does. art. It does. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. And so what are you, um, you're getting ready for this event. Artistically, though, or any. Artistically, I have a big piece on my table called Heaven versus Hell. Mm -mm. that I'd like to fuel some of this angst for everything going on into. Been working on a lot of mini mosaics because people, you know, times are tight. So I like everybody to make art accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So I have a series of those that I'm working on that I'll be debuting. And they might not be out in time for Christmas, but nobody's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I had a wonderful workshop outdoors at, uh, Bartram's Garden. Now, talk about hidden gems. Sister reached out to me. Uh, Shana Mitchell does the programming over there. I've never been. Mm -hmm. And I was like blown away at what a beautiful natural space right here in the middle of the city we have. So the week before Thanksgiving, we had that lovely 70 degree weather and I got to do a workshop outside socially distanced. Uh, and it was wonderful. It was sold out, packed. Mm -hmm. Not pack, but a nice turnout. Everybody was socially just, I get a, you know, there's no more uh, show stoppers, you know, you gotta you find different language. Uh, uh, but in the future, 
that's what I plan on doing a lot more of. Uh -huh. you know, outside socially distant things because you need that therapy and everybody left they felt so you know lightly like a weight was taken off their shoulder you know it's art is just such amazing therapy you know it's a mm -hmm. wonderful thing yeah yeah um i know my buddy uh brian baysmore do you know brian yeah, brian it's a good friend of mine yeah, okay friend. yeah uh in fact he lives down uh, he's he down. does live down in west he's um he he has a place over in Bering, but I know his mother unfortunately passed away this last year. Sure. Mm -hmm. And she was, uh, he was staying with her, helping take yeah. care of her. But me and him have a great relationship because he's always been, he knew me before. I, 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 I probably got into art later compared to my family. I always did it, but it wasn't my main mm -hmm. focus. I mm -hmm. went to school to be a history teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but he's always been very generous with his time, always very supportive. Mm -hmm. you know, so he was one of my few early Mm -hmm. supporters like uh, you know I used to have like little art workshops at my house and he would come create with me mm -hmm. you know he was always pushing me in that direction and he's always we both have this relationship where if I hear about a grant or something I'll tell him he'll mm -hmm. tell me and everybody's not that way yes. some people are like you know oh that's competition I'm not you know but he's very generous you know that's the way you should be because what's meant for you is for you you know you can't mm -hmm. you know but well he and, was just telling me he's got finishing up a piece I think it's going to be over right near on the other side of the bridge from the zoo at 33rd Street. Oh, wow. And, and Gerard. So uh, I know he's got a couple of pieces. Me and him were supposed right. to collaborate. And now, I don't know, I guess it could happen like if I do my mosaic and then send somebody the canvas mm -hmm. with the mosaic that can do their... Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm such a control freak. I'd like to, you know, I want to put my input in it too. Uh, but there's a few artists that I was supposed to collaborate with because collaborations are always fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to think of a way to do that now. Yeah. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, people have been, it's been fascinating to me to see how people have been creative adapting. enough to kind of, yeah, adapting. And, um, um, I just know it's not easy, but it's uh, particularly since, you know, art, <laughs> There hasn't been the kind of emphasis I would like to see on um, on art here in this city, and uh, you know I go up to New York quite often, and it just seems. Are like, you still going since all this? I haven't been up since all this, and I miss it. Yeah, I went. Um, we went up. I want to say August, just to have dinner. Gotcha. And uh, we were at Sugar Bar, um, you know. To, place Ashford and Simpson um, or used to, well, uh, of course, Nick died, but. Um, Did the wife still has it? Yeah. And Good. so uh, we were up there kind of hanging out, just sitting outside and uh, yeah, I miss it. But I, I've, I, I don't know. I've just been of the opinion that they're, they're a lot more supportive of the art uh, there than we are. But I mean, not being an artist, uh, just, someone who views it and uh, you know as a pay, uh, patron patrons uh, are important uh, yeah <laughs> but um uh so even that's even before you know uh this covid thing so i know it's been difficult but i i but it's been amazing the way people have been really like being uh, so creative to, to find ways to get out there and and, and share with people um i uh Speaking of supports for artists, uh, Mirror Arts did have a wonderful thing. I, they had a um, grant for black artists in the city. Mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be one of the recipients of that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there is, you know, I, I, I want to speak about the positive as opposed to the negative. There is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Um, who do you, um, what artists do you like and, and, and you know, obviously your own work but you know what other artists do you really uh well i love i love my mother and my father's work they're two of my biggest influences mm -hmm. uh i you know one of the things i definitely want to do as far as you know promoting my own work but i'd like to put their legacy you know put their work out there more mm -hmm. definitely don't think they get enough recognition um Hmm. 
that's not, put you, that's not, put that's you not on the spot. Special. You didn't put me on the spot. Because I, you know, uh, a lot of influences, but of course I'm drawing a blank right now. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. Um, so, um, in terms of the like most current, the current vibe, you know, with all the protests, all the challenges, all the changes that are going on, um, you know, do you have sort of like a plan for how you want to uh, move forward in the next, you know, as this, this thing's going to come to an end at some point, you know, and coming out of that, how do you see, or do you have a plan for how you, you know, want to uh, kind of... I do want to use, forward. I mean, I, this, if, if, if nothing else, mm -hmm. the COVID epidemic has taught me how valuable and how precious time is mm -hmm. and that you shouldn't waste it. So it's like, I would have danced more. I would have gone out to galleries more. I would have put myself out there more. Mind you, I'm no wallflower, mm -hmm. but I would have gone even harder had I known, you know, that's my biggest thing to say. If only I would have known, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think if you do, you know, you know, I want to sit here, work on my art, have it ready. Because I've never had a problem getting shows. You know, I can talk myself in anything. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I'll talk myself into the video and the show, and then I'll have to go make the art. You know, because I, I have the gift of the gab. So just have the art ready. If you have it ready, opportunity will come. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to try to take this downtime and produce, 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 and have it ready. So when, when, when that opportunity comes, I can jump on it. Because... Uh, I mean, we're losing some time here. You know what I mean? It's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something nobody has because you don't know how long you're, you know, you're blessed to be on the surf for, you know? So. Have you been able to link uh, with any different venues or um, ways to present it? I'm just wondering, like, link with musicians or uh, cover art for, like, you know, well, what used to be albums, but. Well, I'm doing, uh, I just got. I did not come prep for this. Uh, <laughs> there's a quarterly magazine that's being put out and they just reached out to me. They want to feature my art. Mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia. Mm, I wasn't ready. Um, that's all right. Take your time. But uh, no, I like the idea of cross pollinating mm -hmm. of, you know, different. Uh, that's always, I mean, I used to throw events, you know, where I would always have live music. Mm -hmm. You know, art going on at the same time, or my mosaic workshop going on while DJ's spinning. You know, I, I like that, you know, because if you're not into what I'm doing, then maybe you'd be into, you know. As a matter of fact, I did a thing uh, down the bottom, as we were calling it, in our pre chat down in Mantua for the kids. I did a little mosaic workshop. And usually I'm like, you know, have my money, it's this much of that. But, you know, with kids or whatever, you know, I like to give back. Mm -hmm. You know, they were really fascinated, they loved it. I came down, you know, and this was uh, after the first uh, protest. You know, so everybody was a little shell shocked because in my community, that's where it happened. I was out there cleaning up Lancaster Avenue after it happened. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we were the ones who didn't have a drugstore to go to. Didn't, you know, it affected us directly. You know, we're right in the middle of it. So, you know, the kids needed something positive, something uplifting. You know, they really enjoyed it. But the woman, the young lady who put it together, it was. Uh, Mount Vernon Manor, a neighborhood nonprofit. You know, I like uh, connecting with these neighborhood organizations. Uh, she had DJs there showing the kids how to spin and different different forms of art. So, you know, if you weren't into my thing, you know, here's some other things for you, you know. So it's good to, uh, there's more than one way to reach people. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, uh, one of the good things about what I've been doing the past couple of months is just getting so many different ideas. And again, as this thing, hopefully, I actually work for the Department of Public Health in their COVID wow. containment uh, wow. department. So I have to believe that this is going to end at some point soon, hopefully sooner than later. But uh, it's really got me to thinking about just ways that I can bring, you know, people like you and others, you know, to the fore and, you know, how we can collaborate, how we can make some things happen, because it's just so much 
great town and beautiful town in the city. It really is. It's amazing. It needs to be highlighted. Yeah. And, you know, I can't state enough to give the artist, get the artist paid. Yeah. You know, because don't get me wrong, it's a lot of opportunity, but I'm not into that. You know, I'm not suffering, you know, like, you got to pay me my work. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, and you'd be amazed. All the emails that I got with all this going on, people mm -hmm. wanting a freebie or you to come put their art up to mm -hmm. decorate for Christmas. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, and I keep it cool, you know, like, oh, no, thank you. Or I just didn't answer back. But I mean, it's just like I said, it's always the arts the first thing to go from the mayor slash and the budget, you know, to people when they, they come out to us, they want to offer us a pittance and act like, Oh, you know, they're doing doing some great thing for us. You know, mm -hmm. we have to live. We have to, you know, yeah. And, you know, and, um, you know, we talked about bureaucracies. I used to work for the Philadelphia Housing Authority. Okay. I was, in, I was in charge of youth and adolescent programs. Okay. And I remember for the few years I was there, you know, I was able to bring art programs um, uh, into the projects, you know, they always had community centers at the various projects and I was able to get people to come in and do workshops and get them paid. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the thing is that for us bureaucrats and people who work in some of these capacities in the government, you know, just being a little bit creative, you can get people like you and others uh, work, you know, and it just, it's just really a matter of sometimes just thinking a little bit outside the box uh, to make that happen. Um, so we're going to get ready to close out. What, if you have any final thoughts or, first of all, remind us again. For oh, the, yes. Uh, better please, world. Mm -hmm. please come through and support betterworld.org. It's a fundraiser for CEC, wonderful nonprofit that does so much in West Philly and throughout the city for artists that come and use our space at betterworld.org. And, and the fundraiser is going to be open from December 13th to December 20th. Come through, buy some art, support. Thank okay. you very much. And how can they see and contact you and, you know, to find out more about what you're doing? What I'm doing. <laughs> um, I have an Instagram, Ellen Tiberino Art. You can I, all my art I post up on there, or a lot of it. You know, a lot of stuff I'm working on. I don't put it up till it's finished. But they can contact me through my Instagram. Uh, I'm working on a web page. Just artists are bad about that sometimes. Mm -hmm. what, uh, I'm trying to think. What was the web page that I went to? Where I oh, that's my oh, family's. Oh. Yeah, you could go on there. Some of my work is on there. Um, mm -hmm. TiberinoMuseum.org. No, TiberinoMuseum.com. Tiberinamuseum.com. So. And that's 3819 Hamilton, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But we're closed now. Um, we um, Philadelphia Contemporary uh, granted the museum a grant. So we're doing some, you know, retooling of the place. And, mm -hmm. you know, because of COVID, we're closed for a bit. All right. Well, finally. It's been a pleasure, and uh, let's hope thank you for having me. Thank you for thank you for being persistent. I wasn't blowing. I'm just no. I a lot going on, you know. Everybody's got to be hustling right now. Yes. Hopefully, yes. when this thing passes over, we can do this again, and maybe uh, you know do something outside and get down there and you know see all that what's going on. I would love that. All right. Take care. Pleasure. It was a pleasure meeting you, Robert. Have a wonderful.